everyone welcome back to another session of azure devops training let's just quickly go ahead and have a look at the agenda for the session so we are going to start the session by uh, creating a backlog and we'll see how to assign work items and sub work items in a backlog and we'll see how to create a sprint and then moving forward we'll also see how to assign work items to a sprint okay so i'll just move ahead and i'll open my azure devops account so here you can see that i've created a couple of organizations i'm working in this particular organization right now and i already have few projects over here but for this particular demo i'm going ahead and creating a new project so project two and let's just name it as agile process because I'm going to choose agile process for this one. So if you are thinking that why am I specifically choosing agile process? So do not worry about it because all the four processes, the main four processes, right? Agile, basic, CMMI and scrum. Everything else that you're seeing is the, is something custom that I've created, but Agile, Basic, CMMI, and Scrum. So the way you create a backlog, the way you create an work item, the way you create a sprint, everything is like, you know, mostly same in all uh, other kind of processes as well. But right now I'm going ahead with Agile. All right. So I'll choose Agile and I'll click on Create. So my project got created. Now on the left side, there's an option for boards. If I click on boards, I can see a backlog option. Okay. So there's nothing right now over here because I have not created anything because I just created this project, right? So I have not created any work item and I have not assigned any work item to this particular backlog, right? Now, if you want to see that, what are the types of work items that are available for this particular project? You can just simply click on this plus icon. And here, if you click on new work item, just hover on this, you will see all the options that are available. You can create an epic, you can create a feature, you can create issue, task, test case, or a user story, all right? And then here you can see a drop down over here. So if you click on features, then if you have created any features, though that will be displayed over here. And if you want to see the user stories that are created in the backlog, then you can just simply choose the stories option from here. Okay. Now let's just go ahead and create, uh, create an epic. Okay. Let's just start with an epic. So I'm going to, uh, create one epic here okay i'm not giving any details i just want to show you the hierarchy of the work items that we can actually create under a backlog all right so i'm just creating an epic and if you guys remember epic is the biggest chunk of a requirement right and then you can start breaking down uh requirement requirements from epic to like you know more granular level going forward all right now we have already created an epic right but if you see it's not showing here because we have selected stories here and if I click features, then of course it will not be visible because it is an epic that I just created, right? So in order to show the epic as well, you just need to click on this gear icon. And then here you need to select the epics as well and then save and close. All right, so from here, I will go ahead and click on epic. So I have this epic here, okay? Now I can, uh, I can create another epic over here. So let me just go ahead and let me see if I can create it from here. It is allowing me to create a feature, but if I click on here, yes, I can create another epic just from here. Okay, so epic two. Hold on. Epic two. Okay. Add to bottom. All right, and then I can create another epic. Let's just create a few more. Okay, add to bottom and just one more epic four, add to bottom and that's it. Okay, so these are the epics that I've created. Now after epic, because epic, epic is the biggest chunk of the requirement. Now I want to, let's say I want to break down an epic into like, you know, different features. All right. So what will I do? I will basically click on this plus icon. And then I, here you can see that I have this option of new feature, right? So here I can say feature one and save and close. And then again, I can create another feature, okay? Feature two, okay? So you can see that under this Epic, Epic one, we have two features available, right? So let's say um, you guys, if you guys remember, we have already discussed these in previous sessions, right? So let's say if your Epic is um, module one, right? So in module one, if you have different features, let's say sign in, sign up, or like, you know, basically a login 
uh, functionality, how many parts you can, like, you know, how many features you can break down a login functionality. So that is how you can break down your features and you can create different features under one module, under one epic, all right? So that is how you can basically decide that, like, you know, what you would be creating under an epic and then how you are going to break down that epic into different features, okay? And once you have broken down your epic into different features, you can still break down it into different user stories, okay? So user story. So here I can say user story one. User story is nothing but you can say that like, you know, one piece of requirement that you can basically assign to one single developer. And like, you know, if you think that um, it's not very big and it's a, like, you know, small piece of requirement, it's and it is good enough for one developer to be completed, right? So you can create one user story here. So now you can see that I have one epic, two features and under one feature I have created one user story okay now let's just go ahead and create another user story here all right so there are two user stories under feature one okay now in feature two also let's just go ahead and create one user story user story three because two we have already created under feature one okay so user story three and let's just create one more. All right. Okay. Now we have uh, one epic, two features, and we I have kept two user stories in both the features. Okay. Now what can happen inside a user story? You can create a task, right? To a more granular level. Let's say if there is something, it could be just like, you know, related to a pre-deployment step or a post-deployment step, or it can also be related to some configuration settings, something that you think that like, you know, is actually equivalent to a task or, um, or let's say your project actually works that way, right? That, I mean, they have made it mandatory. Your Scrum Master has made, made it mandatory that if you have created a user story, then you have to create like, you know, you have to split your user story into different tasks, okay? So you can also create different tasks under a user story, okay? So here you can create a task. So let's say task one, okay? And then again, you can also break down into two tasks, okay? One user story. And these are optional. You don't have to create a task, right? If just the user story is enough, then it's fine. But if like, you know, uh, because in a lot of projects, like, you know, the kind of process they follow is different. So if you are asked to do, do these things, then you should be knowing that how to break down a user story into different tasks. All right. So that is why I'm showing this to you. So task. Now, let's say your user story is completed and the quality analysis team, or you can say that testing team has already test started, like, you know, testing on the user story. And if they actually find a bug or a defect in the user story so they can also come here and then they can create a bug on this user story okay which is nothing but a defect okay so bug one okay and save and close don't worry about the details we are going to discuss about the details of every work item so don't worry about that now so this is how you can like you know break down a user story now if you see let me just <clears throat> Okay, so we have four epics. In epic one, we have two features, okay? And in feature one, I have two user stories. And in feature two, I have two user stories, okay? And in user story one, I have two tasks and one defect, okay? So that is this actually shows you the best of the hierarchy that like, you know, how everything is broken down at the most granular level, okay? So now let's just go ahead and check out the details of each and every work item that we have here. So starting with the epic, I've already discussed this in previous sessions, but I will quickly give you an overview of like, you know, what every field uh, actually signifies here. So here you can see this particular box where you can assign this epic to one of the developers that you have added in your team. All right. So that is why this field is available. And then if you want to tag any extra text to the user story, then also you can say, let's say um, uh, sprint one or let's say like, you know, login functionality, anything like you know, any kind of tag for which you think the fields are not available, you can actually put that tag here. You can add as many as you want, okay? And it shows zero comments because there has been no discussion on this particular epic right now, okay? State will show you the state of this particular epic that if it is new, it is active, or if it is resolved, closed, or like, you know, removed. Removed could be like, you know, maybe this particular functionality or like, you know, it is going out of the backlog, then that can be actually marked as removed, okay? So this will show the status of this particular epic. 
area will show like you know under what project it is iteration will show that like you know under what sprint it has been tagged to so here like you know whatever sprint you want to tag it to you can actually tag so iteration one iteration two iteration three is nothing but these are sprints right that is how it is by default it is named in azure if you want to change the names of these things right you can name it as sprint one sprint two sprint three and i'll show you how to do that so don't worry about it but basically in the iteration you can mark this epic that for like you know which sprint it belongs to all right and then uh, <clears throat> description is something where you would be entering the details for this particular epic because in this title field you can only enter up to 255 characters but this is a rich text area you can see a lot of other options available over here right i mean even you can uh, insert an image over here okay so you can just add the details of this particular epic over here and in the discussion if you want to add anything or like you know if you have any comment and if you want to ask anybody anything then you can mention that person using at the rate <clears throat> and all the available people right everybody who is available in your team added in your team they will start showing up here and you can simply search and add that particular person and then write your question over here okay so that's one thing now let's say if you want to um like you know mention any of the other work items over here then you can use hash over here okay and then you can see right all the other work items that i have created it has started showing up Okay, so I can like, you know, mention any of the work item. Let's say if I'm telling, asking somebody that, you know what, I think that this epic is a duplicate of which work item, then you can just simply mention hash and then you can search that work item and then keep it here. And then basically you're informing the team or the like, you know, the business analyst or the functional team that the epic that you have created, I think this is a duplicate of this one. Similarly, for example, let's say you have created a bug and somebody has created the same bug. And then so that you can like, you know, comment, uh, tagging the testing team saying that you know what this particular defect is a duplicate of this particular item so you can just mention hash and you can tag that particular work item okay so that is how you can make use of the discussion and every time you're tagging somebody in the discussion the moment you click on save and close or like you know just save that person that person whoever you have tagged using at the rate right they are going to get an email notification about this particular chatter that you have dropped all right and then on the right side, you can see that there is a priority. If this particular epic is on the highest priority, then you can choose one. And then if it is on the lowest priority, then you can choose four. Okay. Similarly, if it is like, you know, on the second priority or the third priority, then you can choose these values based on the priority that this particular epic holds in that particular sprint. Okay. Then here, I mean, in the risk, if you think that in order to complete this particular epic, if there is something that like, you know, you're waiting for, or there are some blockers, or if you think that it is very complex or anything that you feel that like, you know, like, you know, about the risk of this particular epic, then you can choose accordingly, right? If it is on high risk, medium or low, let's say if everything is so sorted, very clear, no blockers, nothing to be like, you know, uh, actually wait for anything you can like you know simply go ahead and like you know create user stories assign that to development team if you're not seeing any issues basically then you can mark it as the low low risk okay so that's one thing and then effort is something that you have to define how much time uh, sorry how much how much time it is actually going to take in order to complete this particular epic development okay and then in the business value you will <clears throat> okay business value is supposed to okay no that's that's another one. Okay. So we will talk about this one. Okay. The time criticality also you can mention, right? If you have any uh, deadline for the time criticality, criticality, then also you can mention that. And then start date and target date. Target date is something which will be the deadline. If you can like, you know, mention a deadline that before this particular date, this epic has to be completed, then that can be mentioned. Start date will be something when the development team actually starts working on this epic, then that date can be mentioned over here. In the classification, if you see, there are two options, architectural and business. So basically, um, when, like, you know, when this particular epic is going to be developed, then what part of the project what part of the software it is going to impact if it is going to impact the business or if this epic is going to impact the design or the architecture right so that you can mention over here and then on the right side you can see like you know if you want to see the history of this particular epic then you can click on here so you can see that i created this particular epic and i moved to moved it to new state right so that it is showing me this now let's say if i change the status of this particular epic from new to active right so then it will also start showing me that particular history like, you know, that I, I change this, uh, I change the status of this particular epic from new to active on which date. Okay. So that is how it will start. Like, you know, it will show you the history of each and every change that happens over here. Okay. 
anything that is changed is going to be dragged under this history tab all right and then we have something called links here you can if this particular epic is uh, actually related to any of the other work items any existing work item then you can add a link to that particular work item or if like you know you can also create a new work item and you can link that particular work item to this epic that also you can do or let's say if you want to create a task for this particular epic that also you can do right so if i click on here and then let's say if i click on new item here you can see the options that i available that that are available for me right bug epic feature issue task test case and user story so to this particular epic no matter like you know what you want to actually link this with you can create those things and if you don't want to create a new one if let's say there is a work item that already exists right then that also you can link existing item and then you can search that existing item and you can here like you know entering the work item id you can search that and you can just link that particular work item to this epic right if there is any work item which is like you know interdependent or like you know codependent on this then you can do that as well and there is this fourth link which is for documents so if you have any documents let's say could be like you know uh, a word document or it could be a excel file or any kind of document that you have and you know that like you know anybody who will be working on this epic they would be requiring those documents then you can attach upload basically those documents here you, if you click on add attachments it will like you know you can load that particular document from your local system okay so these are the details that are available for epic all right so now let's just close it and if i go to a user story let, let's just go to a feature everything like you know state reason area iteration all and this like you know particular assigned to box then adding a tag comment section details history links and attachment everything is almost same only you will see like you know few extra fields over here for example here you can see the risk right i mean the risk was already there on the epic as well effort business value criticality actually it's all same so everything like you know is all the fields and all the options that you have available over here it's all same and again like you know i think you guys already know this but if you want to follow any changes on this particular feature and you can also do the same thing in your epic right if you want to follow that like you know if there is any change over here then if you want to be notified then you can just simply go go to this particular work item and click on the follow button okay and there are a few more options that are available if you click on these three dots right you can see that uh new linked work item change type and then move to team project create copy let's say if you want to clone this particular work item then you can clone that as well if you want to email this work item to somebody right then you can do that as well directly from here if you click on here your it will directly open your outlook and it is going to attach one attachment for this particular work item in your email right and then you can send an email of like you know this particular work item to someone you can delete it there are templates available new branch we are not going to discuss about these things because we don't we have not discussed about repos all right so let's just leave it for now then let's just quickly go ahead and check out what do we have in the user story again like you know most basic things are going to be same the only uh new thing that you would be seeing in a user story is acceptance criteria okay state reason area iteration is same assigned to is same tag is same zero comments description is going to be same discussion story points priority risk value area right and these options that you see here that they are also going to be same and here also like you know everything is going to be same but if you go back to the details and if you see acceptance criteria okay so acceptance criteria is something that actually gives you the whole outline of the requirement let's say like you know whatever is mentioned over here right whatever let's say if i have mentioned five points over here and the developer says now he has built he has already done the development for those five points and now when this user story goes to a qa team member right a testing team member and they start testing the story then they will test the story they will validate the story like you know the de development that is done by the developer with these points that are mentioned here right acceptance criteria that means that whatever you have mentioned here if your user story if like you know whatever you have built if everything is working as expected as like you know these points that is being mentioned here that is when this user story is going to be accepted that is why it is called acceptance criteria okay so let's say if there are five point mentioned here developer says that like you know i have developed everything 
as per the acceptance criteria now a qa member is actually he he is testing this user story and out of those five points only four things are working the fifth thing is not working then this particular user story is going to go back into the developers bucket because it it like everything in the acceptance criteria is not working as per the uh, like you know uh, requirement okay so that is why this acceptance criteria is very important when you talk about a user story because everything mentioned here should work as it is right no changes like you know whatever is written over here the you are like you know whatever your development uh, whatever development you have done everything should be working as exactly as it is mentioned in the acceptance criteria all right so everything else is uh, literally same here development uh, i mean you can actually add a link to the like you know pull request or like you know the any kind of commit that you have done but again we have not discussed about repo so let's just not go into this right now then related work here also like you know if there are any other user story existing item and new item this is nothing but the same thing that we saw in the link right so it is that and it is also showing me that like you know what are the other items that are available in this user story so if you see here right this is user story 1 if you see here in user story one, I have created two tasks and one bug, right? So let me open this and you can see that in this particular user story, I have, there are three childs, right? One bug and two tasks. This is what I have created, right? So it, it is actually showing me all the related work, which is actually tagged to this particular user story. All right. And it is also showing me the parent. The parent is feature one, right? So feature one is the parent and there are three child. So feature one is the parent and there are three child, two tasks and one bug, right? Then again, if you go on the task, you are going to see similar details, right? The extra detail that you have available over here is the efforts, which is broken down into three parts, original estimate, remaining and completed. Let's say the original estimate was like, you know, uh, six hours to complete this particular task. Now out of six hours, you have already like, you know, completed, like, you know, worked for three hours. Okay. So you can just put like, you know, three hours here, then the remaining three hours is going to be get like, you know, will be tracked under this. So that is how like, you know, if someone or let's say a scrum master or a team lead, if someone actually opens this task and they have a look at this, then they will understand that, okay, like, you know, out of six hours of original estimate, you have already spent three hours and three are remaining. So your task should be completed in the next three hours. All right. And then uh, integrated in build. Again, we will not talk, talk about build right now. Every other option is similar. The history link, and the document thing and even these options all right so and there's one more thing which is activity here right so in activity you can see like you know which kind of ta task it is right whether it is related to deployment design development documentation requirements or testing because when you are breaking down uh when you are breaking down a user story into different tasks then it can be any task right for example let's say if this user story was about building a login functionality right now the developer has already built the login functionality that means he has done the development okay so task one could be just for the development so he this activity can only be assigned to development right so if i assign this to development so that means one user story one was broken down into different tasks task one was to develop the user story task two was to deploy the user story right and then you can also create another task here <clears throat> All right. And here in this task, you can say like, you know, testing. Okay. <clears throat> task three was to test the user story. Right. So this is how, like, you know, even if you rename your task, right, let's say, uh, uh, development. All right. So you can see that the task one was to develop the user story. Task two was to deploy the user story and task three was to uh let me create one more oh okay it's here okay so task three was to test the user story right so that is how you have broken down your user story okay and these are the details that were that was available if you're not mentioning that in the title then of course like you know you have this activity field that like you know by seeing the activity field you'll be able to know that what for what activity of the user story this particular task was created okay now let's just go to the bug so here, let's say if testing team is testing your user story and then they found a defect, then they will be creating a bug, right? And these are the, again, like, you know, basic details that are available, then uh, repo, re, sorry, repro steps, right? Like uh, all the steps, like, you know, steps to basically reproduce this defect, right? That what are the steps that the testing team performed 
and then they encountered this particular defect then they have to mention all the points that they logged in they did this they did that and then at this particular point they actually found an issue right so that kind of uh, steps to replicate the issue or you can say to reproduce the bug you they will be mentioning all the steps over here and this is a system info section where they will mention that in which environment right they were testing this defect and they actually encountered the issue right so this will be the system in, uh, information and this is same <clears throat> effort is going to be same they are going to mention the severity if like you know if as per the testing team if the defect let's say the defect is like you know a very critical defect let's say if um in order to test a user story let's just imagine that you have to log into the org and just imagine that the login itself is not working so that is a blocker for the testing team right so in that case they are going to mark the severity as critical right or high because it is a blocker for them right so depending on the criticality of the defect they are going to mark the severity all right and then story point is something that how much like you know time it is going to take and how many points are assigned to this particular defect okay so story points is basically defined differently in different projects for example uh in the projects i have worked mostly i have seen that one story point means three hours so let's say if i keep one here and if i save it here right so everybody in my project will actually be knowing that what story point one means what is the meaning of three story points or five story points or eight story points right so uh if one story point because one story point if i have already defined my project that one story point is equals to three hours then everybody will be aligned to that if there is any user story any defect or any task whatever is created and the moment they see a user story sorry story point as one then they will understand that this particular work item is supposed to be completed in three hours okay so that is what a story point is all right um activities again like you know during you can like you know because it is a bug you can actually mention that during what when it basically when it comes back to the developer right the developer can actually mention that like you know when did like you know due to what this particular defect like you know uh came into picture or even the testing team based on their experience they can select an activity over here okay uh these things are same and again like these three tabs are same okay here also the options that you have are same so this is how you create uh like you know hold on this is how you create a backlog right because this is what i did right in my backlog i created four epics in one of the epics i have created two features i have created different user stories in the user stories i have created task and defects right so this is how you prepare your backlog now let's say your backlog is prepared but the main uh, work is still pending right because you have to assign few of the requirements from your epic to any of the iterations right now let's say that this whole from this whole backlog you have had like you know you had discussion with your team your manager your scrum master everybody and you came you all came to a conclusion that what items out of these four epics and the user stories or whatever you have kept in the backlog what are the items that are supposed to be part of sprint 1 and what are the items that are supposed to be part of sprint 2 right so based on that discussion you are going to assign your user stories to like you know to the respective sprint so for example let's say that you already know that your user story 1 from feature 1 which belongs to epic 1 should be part of iteration 1 so you can just simply drag and drop it here see the moment i just tried to drag and drop all everything like you know became enable right so i can drop it to iteration 1 so now the moment i drop this user story 1 to iteration 1 you can see that like you know this shows me that one user story is assigned here okay and then here you can see that it shows me that there are th three task in this particular user story and there is one defect to this particular user story right and it is also showing me that this is your current sprint okay and let's say if you want to as i mentioned right if you want to change the name of these things if you want to change it to like you know sprint 1 sprint 2 sprint 3 and you don't want to keep it as iteration 1 iteration 2 and iteration 3 then you can do that as well you need to uh, click on this and then you need to click on the uh, settings oh no sorry not from here hold on here set dates okay not from the gear icon gear, gear icon basically will i mean you can change the things on the work items but once you have selected the sprint you need to click on set dates because 
I mean, I do have iteration one, but nobody knows, right? That this iteration till what, like, you know, what is the start time of this particular stream, uh, sprint and what is the end time of this particular sprint, right? My one sprint in my project could be of two weeks and it could also be of three weeks or it could be of like, you know, four weeks, right? So I need to set the time, right? So here you can click on set dates. And here, first of all, I want to change the name. So let's say sprint one. Let's say I want to select the start date as, uh, let's say Monday. Okay. And the end date. So Monday, like one week and two week, right? So let's, so let's say, I think if I choose two weeks, then I can do this, right? So anybody like, you know, uh, for this sprint, they will understand, okay, this sprint starts at 16th and it ends at 27, right? And then I can click on save and close. So you can see sprint one and it is also showing me the date that 10 working days, this sprint is actually, um, should be completed in this 10 working days, right? The dates that I have set. And similarly, you can do the same thing for this. So you need to click on the sprint, sorry, the iteration. I clicked on iteration two, right? Now, if I click on, because you, you can see this iteration is selected, right? Iteration two. Now, if I click on set dates, then it is going to show me this particular box. And here again, because my sprint one is ending on 27th, right? So I can start this sprint from 30th. See, it is already showing me, right? Uh, that's how smart it is, right? Because it is showing that your sprint is ending on 27th on this Friday, then probably your sprint two will start from 30th, right? From Monday. So you can choose this 30th and see it automatically selected for me, right? 10 working days. So if you have selected, like, you know, the way you have selected dates for your sprint one, like the number of days that you have kept for a sprint one, it is going to automatically select the dates for the next iterations. Okay. That is why it is called iteration. Okay. Save and close. Okay. So sprint one and sprint two sprint two, because I have not assigned anything in sprint two. Right. So we will do that. Don't worry. Let's just select, uh, something for sprint three. Okay. So let me go to iteration three and let me select a date for straight. <clears throat> so sprint three and here from 13 to 24th and then save close. Okay. All right. So I will again go to the task board. Let me go to sprint one and we'll see that what are the, these are the items of the sprint one. Okay. Now we have, because we have switched to sprints, right? If you see the tabs has changed from backlog to sprints, right? If I just want to drag and drop, I can do that. So if I click on backlog again, so here you can see, right? So let's say if from Epic one, Feature two, for some reason, we have decided that these stories from feature two should not be part of sprint one. We want to like, you know, develop these stories as part of sprint two. So you can simply just drag and drop it here. Okay. And then use a story four. I mean, this is because this is your backlog, backlog, right? You have kept all the requirements over here, but then when you actually start working on the sprints, you will decide based on the priority, based on the like, you know, criticality of the feature that what should be built first and like, you know, what is the best sequence of building features, right? So based on that, you're going to decide that what particular user story should fall under which sprint, right? So that is how, and from here you can see like, you know, sprint one has these many items, sprint two has this work item, sprint three has this work item, right? And uh, it also shows what is the current sprint. So once this particular date arrives, right? After that, it, it will start showing this particular sprint as current sprint. And then if you actually go on sprints, here you can see that sprint one, what are the items that are part of sprint one, right? One user story, three tasks and one defect, right? This is what we had, correct? And if I go to sprint two, I have only one user story in sprint two. So that is what it should show me. So only one user story, right? And it is also showing me the user story number 19, right? The ID that actually got assigned when I created the work item. Sprint three also, I have one user story. So it is showing me, all right? So this is how you can create backlog and you can create sprints and you can create um, work items in a, like, you know, backlog and how you can create uh, sub items in the backlog, right? And then how you can actually assign work items to a sprint, all right? So this is it about this particular session and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.